Hello, Bible readers. It's Friday, January 15th. We're reading Psalm 94, Psalm 119, and then John, the 11th chapter, the story of Lazarus, verses 17 to 44. Psalm 94, uh, despite appearances, the psalm is willing to admit the appearances of the world, but despite that, God's reign is not so that the wicked will prosper, even though the wicked do seem to prosper in this world. Faithful people say God rules even while crime does pay. Um, it's really a, a psalm about short-term versus timeless thinking. You know, just because for the short term we see um, the wicked prospering and all that, that doesn't mean that God doesn't reign or that God isn't good. Psalm 119, whoa, right? That was a long one. Uh, that might be the longest one. Obviously, it's built for instruction. Uh, it's been criticized by many for being very legalistic. Uh, but if one reads more closely, yes, it's about the law and refers to God's law as a gift, but and, and obedience to the law is something to be held up as as good, but there's also a lot uh, in this psalm about depending on God's grace. The last line, for example, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. You know, coming to God as a lost sheep, admitting uh, that, that I am lost, um, so don't forget me, because I won't forget you. That's, that's grace, not just legalism. Now, this story from John has always been my favorite story. If you ask me what's your favorite story in all of Scripture, this might be it. It would definitely is top 10. And so what's interesting is, as I read this commentary today, it has a, a take on the story of the resurrection of Lazarus I've never heard before. And I guess that's what I'd lift up is, as we read the Bible, stories take on various meanings if we look at them from the perspectives of, of different people at different stages of life. Maybe you've even had a different interpretation of a Bible story, just one Bible story for yourself from when you were younger to where you are now. Um, you know, I've always read this as Jesus has great compassion for Mary and Martha. This commentary suggests that Jesus is just really frustrated that Mary and Martha won't get it. Uh, Jesus is wondering, will anyone get it? And yet I still have my mission to do, to go die and rise. Um, I have a harder time preaching that. <laughs> Today, as I, as I digest that commentary, that Jesus does not weep or have that guttural reaction to, to Mary and Martha, to their grief um, over his friend Lazarus. And I've always read that as a very human um, example of Jesus. And yet, you know, this commentary is reading it as Jesus's mission is to get people to believe. And now not even, not even Mary, who had shown some signs of belief before in the gospel, now not even she gets it. She's crying along with the Jews. So anyway, it's a resurrection that will lead to a death. We know that because this resurrection makes the Jews very angry. Um, the question that this commentary suggests is, can anyone do better in their understanding or belief in Jesus as the light, uh, the one who is of the Father, one with God? So far, some are making some progress in belief due to the signs that Jesus is doing as he turns water to wine, as he teaches. Uh, but here, as Jesus resurrects Lazarus, I'm just going to read a paragraph from this page. Um, the physical transformation of the dead body of Lazarus to the risen Lazarus, is not the main point of this story. Jesus' action has revealed the glory of God so that the disciples might believe, so that Martha and Mary might believe, so that Mary and the Jews might believe. The greater transformation would be acceptance on the part of all who witnessed the miracle that Jesus is the Son of the Father, the sent one of God. That's the point of the story. Like all points of any stories in John, uh, is for Jesus to get people to believe where he comes from, and what that means. 
I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.